Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here today to show you how to do a card in monochrome, two colors. Um, I'm going to be using a stamp and die set by Trinity Stamps. I fell in love with this, and yes, Courtney, thank you. She did a card, and I just automatically went to this stamp set. It's called Spring Fling Florals. Um, and it's part of Trinity's recent release. I do encourage you to check them out. And as always, I will make sure all of their links are down below. So you can see you actually get a die for every one of those images um, that you can stamp. So this is what we're gonna do. So same image, we're just gonna do it two different ways. We're gonna primarily use two colored pencils, a white, and a black we we may pull in the gray um, but it's not necessary the paper that I'm going to use is okay it's wonderful first of all it's black now it is only 90 pounds but that's okay it is a sketch pad so it's got great tooth for colored pencils I've been playing around with this now it is thin but that's okay you can just always put it onto a stronger piece of cardstock as a backing. I will have that linked below as well because when you purchase this, you get two of those packs. They are nine by 12, but just remember it is thinner, even though it says 90 pounds, you know, it's, it's a different weight than what we're used to, 90 pounds, okay? Um, but it does have a good substantial weight to it. So here we go. I am going to stamp with it. I'm going to emboss with it. Again, remember though, it is sketch paper. It's not cardstock. So you'll see what I mean and, and I'll explain that once we get there. So I'm gonna choose some images. I'm gonna choose some flowers. I'm gonna choose some of the leaves. I won't be stamping all of the images, um, but just uh, the majority of them. So again, we're doing this in monochrome. Now it can be any two colors that you want. Um, you could use a gold embossing powder and use a um, pink um, colored pencil or alcohol marker or whatever it is you're looking for. Using just two colors or, or two, two items you can still get a beautiful card. You don't necessarily have to have all of that blending level, if, if you know what I mean. You know, when we do alcohol markers, you know, we use three, four colors to get that blend going. Or me, two. Yes, I use two colors to get that blend going. Um, I do the same thing with colored pencils. You know, I'm using three, four, sometimes five colors to get that blend depending upon the size of the image that I'm working with. But you can get a similar effect using just two colors, all right? So you can see on the white cardstock, of course, I'm going to use black embossing powder. Now the embossing powder that I'm using is by Brutus Monroe because these are awesome images, easy to color but they do have these wonderfully uh, dainty lines that I just fell in love with. So I am using my fine detail and I'm using my alabaster and raven. So here we go. On this black paper, I'm just using a white colored pencil. Towards the center, I'm adding a little bit more pressure. As I come out to the edge of the leaf, I'm using, or the petal, I'm using less pressure. So that's how I'm getting from one color pencil, I'm going to get that variation, that variegated look, that fade out look. I don't need, now, and there's not different layers of, of white that you could do. It's a white pencil. It's, it's what it is. <laughs> but, Again, with colored pencils, it's just in your pressure. You can do the same thing that I'm doing here with an alcohol marker. So you could choose, you know, a pale pink 
okay, or a medium tone pink, whatever color you like. Do one layer, you know, flick it out, do those brush strokes out in the petal, let it dry. Come back to it, do another layer. You'll see the difference because you're adding more ink on top. Key for that, just let it dry. I'll show you that in another video. Again, I've been having fun playing around. And I do apologize. Yes, I'm playing catch up on a lot of videos. I have been without a computer for close to a week and a half. Mm hmm. Oh, yes. And we still have problems with it. So fun, fun, fun. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> but you can see as I'm coloring in. OK, back to the <laughs> back to the card. I'm using sketchy lines. I'm not looking to color in that whole petal. I want to see that black because it's the reverse. In this side, on the black paper, that's my highlight. The black is absolutely my highlight. As strange as it sounds. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the leaves. But for the leaves, I'm going to stay in the center. Now with this leaf here, I'm coloring that whole section. So it's a little different. It's going to be a different image that's going to sit along all of these. But for all of the leaves, for the majority, I'm going down the center and coming out that center vein just a little bit. All of the flowers were done the same where I started in the center and pulled out the colors. For the one, the second flower that you'll see me work on, uh, where it's got, it's almost like a second layer flower there, I am going to make sure my pencil is sharp and make sure that I can get into those crevices to have those little sections where it looks like it's another flower on top to be solid. So you can see just by using the white, it gives you those shadows. For the black or for the white card stock, I'm just going to use the black colored pencil. I'm not going to use the gray. And you can see with a light hand, and again, I'm touching the cardstock. It's, you can see a white in my finger. I am using regular cardstock. I am using, actually, this is the Recollections 110 pound. I do like its tooth, um, meaning it'll grab that colored pencil, grab the color. But you can see I'm fading as I go out. I'm lightening up that touch as I get to the end of those petals. So same concept. I'm using the same techniques. I'm just using a different colored pencil. But again, it's the same colored pencil that my embossing is. So that's what's kind of making this a monochrome look because I'm only technically using two colors and it's like an x-ray. I'm reversing it. Again, I'm always using a heavier pressure in the center of each of my flowers. And for that one flower that has, um, looks like it's got the petals coming up on it. I'm making sure that's filled in. I'm making sure also that I'm using, still using the sketchy lines, even though it's for the black. And I'm doing the same thing on this leaf. I'm covering in those petals completely. Where for the other leaves, I'm staying to the center and I'm lightly coming out to the edges. So I want to stick to that center vein so that I can see the white. Because in here, now it makes sense. The white is my highlight where when I'm on the black sketch paper, I'm using the black as the highlight. Using more pressure for any petals that are to the back, because again, there would be more of a shadow there. So again, we just add pressure to make something darker in colored pencils. 
we make, we add that pressure to it. So in other words, more pigment. And I'm not sure if that makes sense. And again, please know the terms that I use when I'm coloring, whether it's with colored pencils or alcohol markers, they're my terms. I don't, <laughs> okay. I'm not a, these are all of things that I've learned and through watching YouTube's have been inspired um, and just figured it out myself um, through watching all of that. So yeah, I don't use technical terms too well. Sorry about that. I'm coming in with my brush. We've got a lot of color going on there. And sometimes when I use my hand, um, I can create smudges with the brush. I have less of that chance and it can be any brush that you have in your stash. Just make sure it's a very soft bristle. You do not want to use a, a stiff one like the Nouveau brush blending brushes. It's too, too stiff. So these are all of my pieces and they are die cut. Here's what I want you to know that when you die cut the sketch pad, they die beautifully. But if you're using a washi tape or the uh, medical tape or the painter's tape, it will pull up the paper. So do not put it over your image. Ask me how I know. Yes, that's what we do when we play around with our papers. Yes, we teach, we learn ourselves and teach ourselves things. So I only lost one. Here I'm just playing with my placement. I have a white standard A2 size card base, four and a quarter by five and a half, and it is top folding. I'm sorry, the white will be side folding. For the black, also a standard A2 size. That one will be top folding. Now, I know a lot of people use the press and seal. I do as well. A couple things. One, couldn't find it. And two, there's a lot of stick on that. And I didn't want to take a chance when it came to the black paper, the sketch paper. Again, sketch paper is very different. Okay, it's very fibrous. If that is even a word, I don't think so. So I used my painter's tape and made sure I put it on my skin, my clothing, so it would pick up some fibers and be hardly tacky at all. And it worked very well, you will see. By using that painter's tapes, I kept them in the form that I had the placement set to, and I used the ones that were set down onto the bottom with the glue. I'm using my tweezers to very carefully and slowly remove my painter's tape. And again, I did not have anything that was damaged. I'm making sure to keep my painter's tape on until I get to that area because a lot of these flowers that are left are going to be propped up using some foam squares. So I don't want to have them shift. So I am going to make sure that I keep that painter's tape in place. But again, I am using, and I'm going at a nice speed, so I got rid of a lot of the tack. But that's what I do, and I have a painter's tape that I just cut in half to give myself thin strips. But I do like the press and seal. If you have that, use that. I just don't know how I believe, matter of fact, I know. It will tear the sketch pad if it touches that. It will pull some of that paper up onto it. I do feel it's got a stronger stick to it. I have problems with it, but that's probably because I'm using all kinds of force. So it's me, it's always me. I'm now gonna add in the leaves and the sentiments that I chose came from one of my favorite, my favorite Simon Says um, stamp sets. And it's from one of their kits, one of their recent ones called Sketched Flowers. So one is going to say with sympathy and love. And the other sentiment is going to say happiest of birthdays to you. I just love the font of these um, and the images too, but the, the, the sentiments, I just automatically fell in love with. I'm going to do the same thing on the black card base. I'm going to set them in the corners, one in the bottom left and the other element in the upper right hand corner. I did want to keep all of this in. I did speed it up a little bit more, but I wanted to make sure that you saw this entire process um, in making these cards. Again, two colors. 
Um, so you, again, you don't have to, if, if maybe you, you're not comfortable coloring, um, and you should be, you should always be comfortable coloring. It, it does not have to be, um, perfect, but maybe, you know, you're not, you, you want to continue to practice. Um, we get better as we continue to practice you know, using one color. You can get your same results. So maybe the full color is not for you. Maybe this is just another technique that'll say, you know what? I can color. I can do all of this um, and create those different textures when it comes to the colors and so forth. So we're just adding a few of our leaves and we're going to put our sentiment right in that section. And it's actually going to straddle um, because I used a white and a black mat for each of, I used a white for the black sentiment and I used a black for the white sentiment. So for this one, I actually have the flowers straddled in between the mat and the sentiment itself. I pulled out my black gems from Studio Katya and I'm going to use those for the center of my flowers. So for the largest flower, I will use five and the rest I will just use one since they come in different sizes. For the white card, I'm going to use my pearls and I believe these are from Lucy's and these are just half pearls. They're actually, I think they're called eggshell and I'm going to just use one each for the centers of my flowers. Again, I could have used the black gems on the white card and I could have used the white pearls on the black card. Either way would have been beautiful. So I hope you give this a try. It's different. It's using two colors. And again, you can use a gold embossing powder and a rose colored pencil or a rose alcohol, but you're just using two colors um, to create this effect. Now, you also don't have to use embossing powder. Remember, you can just use your stamp ink. You can do that as well. Again, I do hope you enjoyed this. All the products I used will be linked down below, including the link to Trinity Stamps. I um, you know they have a blog um, and their shop, so make sure you check them out. They have some beautiful, beautiful items in there. And check out the embellishments. The shaker bits you will absolutely love. Oh my goodness. You've got to check it out. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below as well. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for stopping by and spending this short little amount of time with me. Okay, not so short. But thank you for stopping by and watching. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell because you don't want to miss the next video. I hope everyone's having a great day. Remember, take care, but always remember what's most important. Always be creative.